Hello and welcome to Technify, your ultimate destination for tech and electronics insights. Today, we'll dive deep into the incredible world of integrated circuits, commonly known as ICs. Have you ever wondered how tiny chips power our smartphones, laptops, or even home appliances? By the end of this video, you'll understand the magic behind these chips, their internal workings, and how they shape our modern world. Let's get started. Integrated circuits, or ICs, are tiny silicon chips that combine millions, even billions, of components like transistors, resistors, and capacitors. These components work together to process data, amplify signals, or control devices. ICs were born from the invention of the transistor in 1947, which replaced bulky vacuum tubes. In 1958, Jack Kilby took this further by creating the first IC, combining all circuit components into a single chip. Kilby's first IC was roughly the size of a thumbnail and had just a handful of components. Today's ICs are smaller but can hold billions of transistors. Integrated circuits revolutionized technology in four key ways. One, they made devices much smaller by replacing large, discrete components. Two, they increase speed, enabling high-speed computations. Three, they made technology affordable due to mass production. And four, ICs are incredibly reliable, thanks to solid-state components. Now imagine this. Without ICs, your smartphone would be the size of a suitcase. Let's talk about the three main types of ICs and their real-world applications. One, digital ICs. These include logic gates, flip-flops, counters, and microprocessors. For example, the 74LS08IC contains four logic and gates. Digital ICs power computers, calculators, and digital clocks. Two, analog ICs. These are used in audio amplifiers, power supplies, and even medical devices. A popular example is the 555 timer IC, known for generating precise timing signals. The 555 timer IC has eight pins and contains transistors, resistors, and a flip-flop. It's widely used for creating time delays or oscillations. Three, mixed signal ICs. These combine analog and digital circuits. They're commonly found in audio equipment and embedded systems. Integrated circuits can be produced in THT type or through whole technology to be soldered to punched cards or in SMD or surface mount device cases to be soldered on circuit board. THT ICs can be easily used by mounting on a breadboard or soldering to a perforated plate and printed circuit board. SMD ICs, on the other hand, are much smaller because they are designed for use on circuit boards produced by machines. For example, on the left, there is the THT type of the PC16F877A model microchip controller belonging to microchip company, while on the right. There is the SMD model IC of the same model belonging to the same company. Likewise, on the left, on the Arduino Uno development board, there is a THT type microcontroller of Atmel company, while on the right, there is an SMD model IC of the same company. Now let's look at how the pins of the integrated circuits are numbered. When we hold it to read the text on the IC, there is a notch or dot on the left side. Pin names are numbered starting from this notch counterclockwise. This is the integrated 18 pins we reviewed. This IC is a 16 pins IC. In this integration circuit, when we hold it to read the text, there is a dot on the left. The pins are numbered from left to right. As you can see, this is also a 13 pins IC. Finally, let's take a look at this IC. In the same way, when we hold the name in such a way that we can read it properly, the pin names are numbered starting from the point on the left. It also has a total of 32 pins. Always double check your connections to avoid frying the IC. Now let's look at what the internal structure of an integrated circuit is like. For example, let's look at how the internal structure of the 74LS08 IC. As you can see, this IC has a total of 14 pins. When we look at the internal structure, we see that there are four logic and gates. This logic gate has two inputs and one output. If both inputs are logic one, that is five volts, the output becomes logic one, that is five volts. If any of the inputs is logic zero, the output is logic zero. 
When we go into a little more detail and look inside an end gate, we can see that there is a circuit consisting of two such transistors and resistors inside this gate. Now, take a microcontroller like the 8 Mega 328 used in Arduino boards. It integrates a CPU, memory, and input-output peripherals, allowing you to program it for countless applications. And modern processors like the Intel Core i9, they contain billions of transistors, enabling multitasking and even AI processing. What's next for ICs? Graphene ICs, these promise to be 1,000 times faster than today's silicon chips. AI chips, designed specifically for machine learning and artificial intelligence. 3D ICs, layering circuits to achieve compact and high-performance designs. NVIDIA's latest AI chip has over 80 billion transistors and is only 5 nanometers in size. The possibilities are endless and the future is brighter than ever. Before we wrap up, here are three essential tips for working with ICs. Always use an ESD wrist strap to prevent static electricity damage. Since ICs are very sensitive to static electricity, they should be repaired in accordance with electrostatic discharge or ESD techniques. When we touch it directly with our hands, they can deteriorate quickly due to the static electricity in our body. This electric discharge can cause damage to electrical tools and components and, in some cases, actually cause equipment failures. Always store ICs in anti-static bags when not in use. And be careful while soldering. Excessive heat can destroy the chip. You can access the technical documents of all the ICs at alldatasheet.com. It is possible to access these documents by typing the name of the integrated circuit in the search section. The basic structure of the integrated circuits on the electronic cards is like this. Integrated circuits have transformed the way we live and innovate. From powering simple devices to enabling AI-driven technologies, they're truly the building blocks of modern electronics. If you enjoyed learning about ICs today, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to Technify, and share it with your friends. Stay curious, stay creative, and I'll see you in the next one.